When measuring XPS spectra, one of the choices that can be made in terms of the acquisition parameters is the pass energy. These data have been acquired from a gold sample and each one has been acquired using a different pass energy. And one of the features of changing the pass energy is that the energy resolution improves. In this video we will look at why the energy resolution changes with pass energy. The question is why does pass energy make a difference to the shape of these peaks? So if we look at three different pass energies 160, 40 and 10 we end up with quite a substantial difference in the shapes of these peaks. The energy resolution changes and the intensity changes. So we can understand this in the context of the hemispherical analyzer and the information that is entering the hemispherical analyzer through an entrance slit. If we had an ideal experiment where we had electrons entering in a paraxial way into this entrance slit and they only arrive with two different energies E1 and E2 and E1 is greater than E2 then electrons will be bent by the hemispherical analyzer and an image of the entrance slit is formed in the detector plane and depending on the energy of the electrons and the separation of these images depends on the path energy. If we increase the path energy then the separation of these images diminishes. So here's an example where we have a high path energy so the electrons have greater energy as they go around the hemispherical analyzer. They are spread less significantly in the energy dispersive direction and we may end up with overlapping spatial information and energy information. And as we decrease the path energy we increase the resolution because the image of this entrance slit moves apart. So in this case we've got the path energy 10 where there's a, a significant separation of these images and so we get a, a peak that is well resolved in terms of energy. The benefit of reducing the path energy is the better energy resolution but this is gained at a cost of signal to noise because if we bend the electrons to a lesser extent it means that fewer electrons over a given energy interval will actually arrive at the detector. If you have a high path energy then the, the electrons are bent to a greater extent so that we end up with many more images of this entrance slit along the detector plane so the count rate because all of these electrons are being measured in parallel so the count rate for path energy 160 is much higher for similar conditions to what you would expect for a lower path energy such as path energy 10. The relationship between the path energy, energy resolution, the size of the detectors and the number of detectors can be seen if we look at something referred to as snapshot mode data. This is where rather than scanning the voltages of the analyzer to acquire a spectrum a specific energy is set and then the path energy coupled with the dimension of the detector that determines the energy interval which is about 20 electron volts and the number of detectors that are spread across the dimension of the detector and in this case we have 128 detectors so we have signal each one of these vertical lines represents signal that has been gathered from each of the individual 128 detectors that span this 20 EV energy interval. Snapshot mode data represents a summation of information in the non-dispersive direction in order to calculate these intensities for each of the 128 detector channels. If we looked at the signal using a 2D detector then we would have an energy dispersive direction and then we'd have the non-energy dispersive direction and each one of these lines represents a different detector in the snapshot mode data and in order to calculate that snapshot 
signal we would sum along all of these lines and you can see that the signal is not necessarily evident in all parts of the detector plane in this detector only signal has arrived along a band that corresponds to the slit that was used at the entrance to the HSA. The reason that we have broad peaks for high pass energy is that the hemispherical analyzer is performing two functions. It's creating images of this entrance slit and it's also separating the energy in terms of position on the detector for these images and it's this blending of spatial and energy information that is causing the broadening of these peaks. So if we look at the gold 4F you can see that this is the 4F at pass energy 160 compared to pass energy 40 and pass energy 40 spectrum is narrower because there is less confusion between spatial and energy information.